video. I hope you're all doing well. First of all, please don't mind the lighting. I feel like the lighting situation in here is not great right now. I keep forgetting that it's obviously getting darker earlier and earlier. It's only 3 p.m. <laughs> and it's already looking really, really dull in here. So I'm gonna try and make this intro nice and quick and speedy. As you can tell from the title, today's video is going to be the living room transformation, which I thought I would film because I had so much fun filming the kitchen transformation. And I really loved all of like the feedback, the comments, um, that you guys left on the kitchen video. So I thought I would bring you along for the living room as well, because that was always, one of the rooms that I really wanted to decorate and one of the rooms that I had quite a clear vision on as well as the kitchen I've kind of put off doing some of the bedrooms because I'm still unsure about what I want to do with them whereas with the living room I really knew in my mind how I wanted it to look um I've just actually filmed the outro so you're gonna obviously like see what it looks like by the end but I'm so happy with it I feel like it's turned out exactly how I envisioned it in my mind so hopefully you guys like it as well we did kind of a similar thing so we did all the painting ourselves we did coven which was a new challenge and it actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. I nearly got someone in to do the coven because it seemed like quite an intimidating job to do. I mean, it's definitely not perfect. It's probably not as smooth and neat as what a professional could have done. But I actually really like doing things myself. Like, I've become quite the DIY girl. And I quite like learning this kind of stuff as well. Like, in the new year, I think I'm going to maybe try to do some, like, laminate in one of the bedrooms and try and fit that myself. I don't know, I just think it's fun to learn these things and fun to develop new skills when it comes to DIY because realistically it saves money and it just means that you can do it in your own time when you wanna do it. And it was somewhat fun. I mean, it was stressful at times, <laughs> but it's quite rewarding doing it yourself. So we did the painting, the coven. We also installed a picture rail. So kind of similar to the paneling that we've done in the kitchen. I did some bits of decor, I've done a bit of a gallery wall, that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm gonna bring you guys along for the whole process. If you do enjoy these sort of house transformation videos, then definitely let me know because I'm thinking I'm gonna do a couple more rooms in the new year. Um, and yeah, definitely let me know all of like your thoughts, opinions, feedback in the comments because as I said, I really enjoyed that about the kitchen transformation vlog and I am still so in love with this kitchen. Like I'm so happy that we did this. So happy we got it done before Christmas, which was what I set myself on a mission for with the living room as well because now we can get the Christmas tree out. It's going to be nice and cozy. Anyway, I'm going to start waffling because I feel like I have such a habit of doing that. In intros um, but I really hope you guys enjoy this video let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and yeah let's get into it okay so this is kind of a rough before because we have already moved some of the furniture out like the little poof um, and also the rug excuse me what's the matter so we were kind of umming and ahhing what color paint to do I'll put the two options on the screen for like the inspo picks that I found we were either gonna do more of sort of like this ready color or more of a green color. And as much as I liked the red, I felt like the green was a more all year round color and the red was more sort of like autumn winter. So we've ended up going with the green and we're gonna do a picture rail. Just wanted something that was gonna kind of contrast against the sofa as well. Obviously having a cream sofa and white walls, it's all just a little bit, it all just blends into one a little bit. So. Yeah, we're gonna go for something slightly darker. So this is the color. It is the shade Treron, if I'm saying that right. And I got it in the dead flat finish. We actually did the kitchen in the estate emulsion, which in hindsight, we probably shouldn't have done because the estate emulsion isn't washable and probably isn't the most suitable paint for a kitchen. But so far, touch wood, it's been fine. Um, but this one is a lot more hard wearing and it is also washable. So we've gone for the dead flat. Let's give you a quick angle of how it looks this side as well. Obviously we've got the TV, um, the TV unit, all of this is gonna stay the same. So the picture rail will finish at this door and then also at this door. Um, I'm really hoping it's gonna look okay, fingers crossed it does, but yeah, that is the plan. Are you gonna do some painting today? I'm having a moment of freaking out. I think this is the darkest paint I've ever used in a room. I mean, when I lived at home, I only ever painted my room white. 
and obviously we painted the kitchen in that kind of like beigey color suddenly i'm like was this the right decision i'm hoping it's going to be the right decision i feel like it will be the right decision I'm trying to have faith I'm trying to just remember obviously when the paint's wet it looks darker as well this is what it's looking like so far so i've just done this section of roll in i feel like it has a nice amount of green to it like you can definitely tell it's green but it's not a really overwhelming shade of green. Freddie's working very hard, as you can probably tell. Good morning, guys. It is now Sunday, so it's the day after since we painted. I've just come downstairs. Um, obviously, I said yesterday I was having a little bit of a wobble about the colour. It's definitely still a bit of an adjustment. I did just kind of walk in the room and think, ooh, okay. A lot of the furniture still isn't in here. The mirror isn't back in here, which I have to say, having a full length mirror in this room makes so much difference to the feel of it in, in the sense of like the size of the room because this living room is a small living room in general. Um, I'm gonna try and get as good of an angle as I can because as I said, it is a pretty small living room and this camera doesn't like to zoom out much, but this is how it's looking. It doesn't the light just look so beautiful the way it's like pouring in through the window here. Yeah, obviously we usually have the mirror here. We still need to bring the poof back in at some point. Um, I don't know what Freddie's drinking there. That is my cup of tea from last night. But this is the color and do you know what? I have to say, I really, really like it. I mean, it's definitely gonna be an adjustment because obviously it's a fair bit darker than the white. I'm sorry. I'm not giving you enough attention, mister. I just think it looks so beautiful and earthy. Green is probably my favorite color. And I think it's quite a nice safe color as well because it's got a little bit more life in it compared to something like the neutral color that we did the kitchen in, but it's also not overwhelmingly bold. Okay, it's a little bit later. Please don't mind the lighting. Obviously, with it being November now, the natural daylight goes a lot faster. So I'm having to work with my like artificial lights. Um, but I thought I'd quickly give you guys an update. I'm gonna try to film bits of this to give an explanation in case anyone is wanting to do any like fit in of coving or picture rails themselves. These are the picture rails that we're using. They're from B&Q. This is what they look like in the packaging. Um, they are pre-primed, but they are a little bit sort of rough. So we're probably gonna paint over them after they've been fitted. So for all of the joints, we're doing mitre joint. So it basically means that it's on a 45 degree angle. So when it meets up at the wall, it should film uh, it should form the right angle, sorry. So this is the angle that we've done for the corners of the room. And then for the extra long bits, because obviously this one stretch of the wall is really long, it's too long for it to just be one strip of um, picture wow. rail. I guess it is still a mitre join. I'm not entirely sure on the terminology, but it's this kind of angle of cut instead. So rather than it being a butt join, which is what this is, just a flat edge, um, they'll slot together on top of each other so it should give a little bit more of a seamless finish. So yeah, both of these have their 45 degree angles ready to slot in together at the corner of the room. Not sure if that made any sense at all. Um, I've watched a lot of tutorials and things today to basically help figure out how to do this. But yeah, I think what I'm actually gonna do just to make life easier, and we did do this when we did the paneling in the kitchen as well, is basically just to knock in some very fine nails around where the wood is gonna sit, just so that when it's gluing, it's definitely staying in place. I think what I'm gonna do this time is actually put the nails in first, just because we're working with obviously much longer strips of wood. So they have got quite a bit of flexibility and bend to them. So that when we put them on the wall, they can lay straight on top of the nails, just sit there and we can push them up and stick them to the wall. <laughs> I hope this is making sense. I mean, I don't know if anyone really cares for the explanation, but I just figured if anyone's watching this video for some advice on how to fit this kind of stuff. I mean, obviously I'm not professional. I'm just going off other stuff that I've watched on YouTube and other tutorials, but hopefully it helps a little bit.
thought I'd also quickly show you guys the coven that I've picked out. So I got this from B&Q. This is basically like lightweight polystyrene coven. It debate doing plaster coven, but obviously plaster is a lot heavier than polystyrene. And I just felt like I had a little bit more confidence fitting this. But it does actually come with instructions on it. So I got all of the things that it says you need, like a saw, um, I've got some coven adhesive and I opted to get the kit that has the pre-cut corners. I love the design of this. It looks really pretty. Obviously, it's a lot more affordable than plaster coven as well. Okay, so we've got one of these little blocks from B&Q as well. This is specifically designed for coven because the angles that you cut it at are slightly different compared to like a standard uh, cutting box. So what we're going to do, obviously, this is coming a pack of pre-cut corners so some of them are already cut which is quite handy especially if it's the first time doing this i feel like it's good to have like a visual of what things need to look like and how they meet up um but we're not gonna butt any of the joints together again we're gonna still do the sort of mitered angled cuts just because it then looks a little bit more seamless when it's up on the wall so for an internal corner we want the longest part of the coven to be at the bottom and then it's going to be shorter at the top so. Yeah, so it's going to meet in like so and then on the flip side again the longest bit will be at the bottom to meet and it will come up at the top. So you can kind of see roughly there where I've marked with the pencil and then I've marked down here as well so I know which way the angle goes because we then have to flip it to cut it to make sure we're getting the right cross angle. <laughs> If that makes sense. Um, I'm going to link everything that we're using down below. We've got like a fine tooth saw as well um, because that's what it said that you needed for this kind of material. So to stick the coven to the wall and the ceiling, we used a coven adhesive that I got from Amazon, which I'll link down below. And then we also used no nails glue once that had run out, um, which both worked absolutely fine. Obviously it's a very lightweight material, so it doesn't need anything too heavy duty to stick it. Um, and we pretty much just stuck it straight on. I know some people like to mark the area out first, but I don't know. I didn't really see what benefit that would give because we used a level anyway to make sure everything was kind of straight, made sure all of the joints kind of butted up together. And yeah, this method seemed to work fine. The only thing I would do differently is I would just do butt joints, if especially with this kit because obviously it has the pre-cut corners. I wouldn't bother cutting the angles for the bits of coven going along the wall just because it added extra time. It was actually quite hard to cut with the wooden block that we had. If you're using like a freehand method then it's probably a lot easier but those joints ended up being messier than the butt joints and they all get corked anyway so that was probably the only thing I do differently okay it's now Tuesday can we just have a second for the makeup today because I had so much fun doing this makeup this morning not that that has anything to do with this video but that is why I'm looking a little bit glam we actually made really good progress yesterday so we got the entire pitch rail up and I'd say like two thirds of the COVID. So this is how it's looking. We got obviously up to here last night. So we've managed to do the majority of the corners. We started in this one, um, which is when we moved the alarm sensor down. Then came around to here. Um, this was the only external corner that we had to do, which was probably the easiest corner to do realistically. But it's looking pretty good. I mean, the glue has dried and made a little bit of a mess here and there, but it's all gonna get corked over and painted, so it should be fine. Picture reel is looking good. Obviously, I put nails in for that, so I'm gonna remove all of those now because the glue should be dried, and then that, again, will just need corking and painting. So in terms of finishing off the painting, I did two layers of Brilliant White on the picture rail. I also painted the space in between the picture rail and the coven and the completely white wall, which is the TV wall, just to make sure everything blended together. And then I did a number of layers on the coven just to make sure um, it all blended together really well, all looked really seamless. Obviously this was all corked as well prior to painting. And then the only thing left to do was to touch up the green paint. So quite time consuming work but definitely worth it when it was done good morning guys it's now friday and we are nearly at the end i thought i would give you guys a quick update on how the room is looking we have a couple more bits that i want to do today but i think we're actually near enough done now and i have to say i love it 
I'm so happy with how it's turned out. It's turned out exactly how I envisioned it in my mind. We've just had a very exciting parcel from John Lewis. Um, there wasn't too much else I, was, I wanted to change in this room apart from obviously like the paint and the walls and things. Um, but there has been a couple of things here and there as we've gone along. So this is a curtain pole because I've decided I actually want to put curtains up in this room now. It's very unlike me <laughs> because I'm not much of a curtains person usually. They've kind of grown on me. And I love the look at the minute of like full length curtains. So I think that is what I'm going to attempt to do. Um, and replace the blind. If anyone watched the kitchen transformation, you will have seen that we changed all of the kind of metal aspects in this room to an antique brass. So just in case you haven't seen that video, I'll link it below in case you wanna check it out because I have to say, I love our kitchen so much now. I'm actually gonna change these prints very soon to the winter prints. Uh, but yeah, we changed all of the sockets, apart from this one, annoyingly, because this is like, kind of like a thermostat to this antique brass and I love this we have a lot of this in the kitchen now with hello are you hungry I'll get your breakfast now so we added in obviously with the shelf the um, brackets and this sort of like hanging pole <laughs> can't remember what the name of this actually is and similarly we have it in the living room anyway with things like the hardware on the lamp. So I have actually ordered some more switches because this is what all of the switches look like in the house. This was like the standard switches that came with this house. So I've ordered all new ones for down here, um, including these because as I do each room, I think I'm gonna slowly transition all of the switches to match what they are in the kitchen. But I'm just so in love with how it's turned out. I love the coven. I feel like that's really, really finished off the room. But yeah, to give you a little overview, this is how everything's looking. So all of the furniture is staying the same in here. I love this sofa so much. It's like my favorite sofa in the world. I'll try and link some bits down below. I get a lot of questions on this TV unit as well. It was actually from made.com. I've actually put the mirror back in which looks really, really cute. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so in love with this room. I feel like this shade of green was perfect in terms of being enough of a green to look green, but not like an overwhelming rich green. And then the only other thing that I have ordered so far for here is some frames for the back wall. And I've gone for kind of like, so it's gonna be a little bit of a gallery wall. And then, yeah, I have the prints here. So with all of my prints, I'll link them down below. Um, but it's the same for what I did in here. So I basically find digital art on Etsy and I then get the art printed for whatever size the frame is or whatever size that I need. They're all kind of like a vintage oil painting style, I would say. Um, really excited to put these all in their little frames. I still am debating doing the Mod Podge hack that I saw where you kind of like brush this over the top and it gives these sort of flat prints texture with like brush strokes. Um, so they kind of look more like oil paintings. I think I might actually test it on this one because I've never done it before. So I don't really want to ruin all of the prints that I've had done. Um, but obviously yeah, it's a lot more sort of affordable than getting proper paintings. I mean, I would love to get like a really nice piece of art for the bedroom at some point. Okay, so I didn't film tons of putting the curtain pole up because guys, someone tell me why this was the thing that nearly tipped me over the edge. Like this was the hardest part of anything and I never knew how hard it was to put a curtain pole up. Um, but I just started by taking the brackets off from the blinds, filled and painted those holes and then very blunt transition, but this is the curtain pole. So again, I'll link this below. Um, I love these blinds so much and the way that it looks. I feel like it finished off the room really nicely. Just received the parcel with all of the frames in for above the sofa. I've got all of the prints here ready to put inside as well. They've actually turned out pretty well. I mean, some of them are kind of textured in areas where they shouldn't really be textured, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't fully follow the brush strokes of the art, but I feel like overall the effect looks pretty good. I've just put this one in here. Um, so you can kind of see the finished result with the prints with the Mod Podge in the frames. Exciting. Do you like the frames or are you a bit? Yeah, they look cute. Oh, that looks good. 
I'm actually so proud that I managed to do this whole gallery wall by myself. I measured the width of the space, the height of the space, and then kind of deducted any areas where I wanted gaps or where I wanted it to start, um, and just worked out the places for the nails from there versus like the size of the frames, if that makes any sense. Honestly, I was shocked that I did this right because I'm usually terrible at maths, but I love the way this has turned out. I'm tempted to actually extend it because I feel like it would look really good going across the whole wall. I really wish we had a brighter, sunnier day to round this video off because I feel like this kind of lighting just doesn't do this room justice. I mean, it does nothing justice, realistically. But it's been around two, three weeks since I started filming this video and I started this whole transformation of the living room. So I really want to round this video off and get it up for you guys. Um, because I really want to know everyone's opinions. That was like my favorite thing when I did the kitchen vlog was seeing all of your feedback, um, all of your like tips, advice, because there are a couple of things that I would like some opinions on. Obviously you've seen pretty much all of this. I've just put like a little Christmassy um, background on the TV. But I have to say, I'm so happy with how it turned out. It feels really, really cozy in here, especially in the evenings when we've like got the TV on, we're watching a film, watching TV. I don't know, it just feels really cozy. And I was worried the paint was gonna make the room feel smaller. Obviously it's a small living room anyway, but I don't really feel like it's had that effect. I feel like if anything, keeping this wall white was probably the right decision in that sense because it's not completely like closed off the light and we do get a lot of light coming through here anyway. But yeah, this is how it is looking now. I love these frames so much. This is actually one of the things that I wanted some opinions on because now that these frames are up, I'm actually tempted to extend it both ways and have the whole of like the width of the sofa with frames above it. I was a little bit worried when I was putting them up that the bottom line was a little bit low, but it's they've been up for maybe like a week now and there's no issue when you're like sitting on the sofa or whatever, which is obviously great. I love the way that it looks and I love like the life that it brings into the room, having the different like prints and different kind of frames. I just feel like it would look really good if it went the full width of the wall. What do we think? Do we think it's overkill or do we think it would work quite well? I think I'm going to keep this mirror here. The only other thing that I was potentially going to do with this space when I first um, moved into this house was to have like a unit with shelves here but I think I'm going to keep it as a mirror because I do feel like it makes the space feel a lot bigger and the only other thing that I'm currently sort of omin and ahhing about is this wall here and also this radiator because I hate this radiator. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous because it's literally just a radiator. I just feel like it's a bit of an eyesore in this room is the best way I can explain it. So I was debating getting quite a wide radio, radio? <laughs> radiator cover. And I was gonna get it in kind of like a walnut color similar to the legs of the lamp. And then I was gonna maybe put like one big kind of light canvas resting on it and maybe like a little vase, some little ornaments, that kind of thing. So it's kind of like extra decor in this room. What do we think about that idea? Because the radiator cover that I've seen on Etsy, it's like 300 pounds, which just feels crazy to spend on a radiator cover, but I can't find any nice ones anywhere. I'll kind of, I'll put a picture in here of the style of it so that you can see the vision a little bit, but that's the only other thing that I'm currently debating is like what to do with this wall. Alternatively, I could just leave it empty and just do the prints and just have that wall as it is. Yeah, otherwise everything is gonna stay the same. I might change some of the blankets on here now that it's Christmas time. We are actually gonna get the tree out either tonight or tomorrow, which I'm so excited about. I went to John Lewis today and got loads of bits and bobs, so you'll see that in the next vlog. Uh, but yeah, all of this is gonna stay the same as well. So as I said, this is from made.com. The lamp was from Habitat, I wanna say. Just put a couple of candles on so it feels nice and cozy. And I've also got my Christmas card from my Nana and Gramps, which is the cutest card ever. It's got two little dogs on the front that kind of look like Freddy's. But yeah, this is pretty much the finished room. There are a couple of bits of coving that are looking a little bit uh, messy. I mean, can you just about, see? I feel like you can kind of see that on there. So 
I'm gonna try to maybe tidy them up at some point but I'm not super worried about it because it's not really obvious unless you're really looking for it and if anything i'm just proud that we did it ourselves because i very nearly did get someone in to do the coven anyway that is another room done obviously we did the kitchen first we've done the living room now i think in the new year i might tackle the bedroom as in like our bedroom the master bedroom i do really like our bedroom but i just feel like again it needs a little bit of life putting into it it's all very neutral very cream um and i'm really enjoying slightly more darker tones yeah i think that might be the task for the new year but i really hope you guys like what i've done in here <laughs> obviously i really like it i know it's not going to be everyone's taste we all have very different tastes when it comes to interior design yeah i'm really really happy with it so any input on the frames and the radiator situation definitely let me know your thoughts anyway thank you guys so much for watching as always i know i've been not the best at posting on youtube this year but if there's anything else that you guys want to see definitely let me know and i will see you in whatever the next video is